today, sweetheart? Oh, I'm going to ask and answer. You're going to ask and answer. So this is my 10-year-old daughter, Maddie. 10-year-old daughter, Maddie. Hey, can I embarrass Maddie before she asks her answer? Well, you can go ahead. She's the gymnast in the family, went to her first gym meet, student super, but she does all of these things in the house. She's always spinning and Uh, doing handstands. So last, uh, so yesterday, she's doing one of her things she's uh-huh. supposed to do, and I'm guessing she's adding a little freestyle in there <laughs> because she spins in her knee, hits, she hits herself in the mouth and knocks her tooth Hit out. Oh my, ma- word. oh, my word. So she comes to me last night and said, Dad, I want to talk to you about the tooth fairy. <laughs> she said, I think because of the way my tooth came out and the fact that it caused me to miss lunch, yeah. I think I should get $2 instead of a dollar. So you just tell that to the tooth fairy. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay, pass that on. Uh, that's, that's, that's great. Hey, Maddie, you wanna, so you want to ask and an- go ahead and uh, answer. Which one do you want to answer? Um, I want to answer Mr. Jim's question about um, the numbers, like okay. how far. Okay. What's um, it, let, let Jim if, answer the que- ask the question, then you answer it. Go if ahead. you were to spell out numbers, how far would you have to go until you would find the letter A? Is it a thousand? It is a thousand. Wow! Are you serious? Way to go, Maddie. Very nice. A thousand. Spell it, them out in your so, head. So you have to say the letter A. A thousand. That's, that's no, no, no. What thousand? Oh, thousand. Okay. All right. Thousand. That's but you have to count that high. Yes. With with spelling out the, the, the yes. numbers. Okay. All right. I got you. All right. That's you know, this really is are you smarter than a fifth grader? Yeah. Because nice. Maddie's All in right, the fifth Maddie, grade. Fire away. Give us your question. Okay, I wanted to ask the one you said ask what is the fastest bird? The fast yes, you wanted to make us look good. Thank you for yeah. that. Yes. The fastest bur- flying bird in the world, JJ, is what? It is the Peregrine Falcon. The Ooh. Peregrine Falcon. Yeah, nice. JJ, let's give JJ a hand. Uh, he, uh, in fairness to JJ, I asked him that before we went on the air, and he knew that the Peregrine Falcon. I mean, instantly. Is the fastest bird in the world. What, how do you know this, JJ? You know, I think the aviator, anything to do with flying and speed, I heard that years ago, and they can they can hit in the 160s when they're in a dive. Wow. Well, according, according to this someone. information, thank you, Maddie, for your Thanks, call. Thanks, Maddie. Maddie. Love you. Here you go. Here's the information I have, JJ, on the, on, the, on the Peregrine Falcon. Right. It says they're able to dive at almost 200 miles per hour. Wow. wow. And the Peregrine Falcon is not only the fastest flying bird in the world, but the fastest animal on planet Earth. My wow. goodness. So that would make your feathers come how off. How can you die? 200 <laughs> miles <laughs> an hour. How can you die? don't have a chance. No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> no they they don't, don't know what hit them, literally. <laughs> right. Uh, but I, if the Peregrine Falcon doesn't calculate right and he's, he's flying into the ground at 200 miles an hour to pick up that mice, or that mouse, mouse, right? Then he's got problems, right? You know, oh, wouldn't you right. say? Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, how many accidents do you hear about having from peregrine falcons that are, you know, diving into the ground and and mis miscalculate? <laughs> you hear about that all the time. You not know, watch Animal Channel, Jim? No, I don't. Well, they have a they have a they, it's they, a special report. Well, they have breaking news. Right. They have breaking right. news on that kind of thing. It's you sad. know, since it's we're really since we're going chasing this rabbit, people no, we're chasing falcon. falcons. Falcon. People I knew that was people coming. say you're talking about having that accident in flight. People say, well, you have to have a parachute to be able to skydive. That's really a misnomer. You have to have a parachute to be able to skydive twice. <laughs> <laughs> Where is that symbol sound when we need right. it, ladies and gentlemen? The Peregrine, just to put a wrap on our Peregrine Falcon knowledge, can be found on every continent except Antarctica. You cannot hmm. find they're they're they don't they're not big on cold weather there. Well, those penguins are so hard uh, to pick up. Yeah, <laughs> true, Jim. <laughs> Duly noted. Uh, Craig in uh, Mount Gilead. Uh, Mount Gilead, Ohio. Hi, Craig. Hi. Did I get your town right? Uh, it's Mount Gilead. Mount Gilead, okay, Ohio. You know, like the mountain in the Bible. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm I'm well aware of that. Thank you. Well, Craig, you want to ask or answer both? Um, I'd like to do both, and if it's okay, my brother would like to do both too. Okay. Well, that's good. How is your brother? Uh. My, br- uh, Your how brother. old are you, Jimmy? Seven. <laughs> He's seven. Uh, oh, Jimmy's younger than you. So you, yeah. you, you so you, the pressure's on you, though, Craig, because right. you're the older brother. You better do the family proud because your little brother's only seven, so he gets a pass if he doesn't do well. So let's go, Craig. 
Which one do you want to answer? Well, um, actually, uh, the person I talked to when I called in, she said I was on first. You are? Well, but, actually, yeah, he's on second. We, I'm sorry, we did let someone else on Who's on, on third? First. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> right. Okay. Nicely That's done, good, Tim. Jimmy. Craig, Jimmy, Craig. Craig. Come on, Craig. What you got, buddy? Okay. Who's um, on third? Did you get that? You said first, second. I said third. Okay. Go ahead, Craig. <laughs> I just the, think. I want to answer the one about the mammal flight. The mammal flight. Let's see what we got here. Let me find my question here. Yes, what is the only mammal capable of true flight? A bat. A bat. Oh, oh yeah. A bat. That's I true. Have thought of a bat. Now another another uh, uh, flying squirrel is is a uh, a good guess, but uh, that would be incorrect. True flight. I mean, uh, a flying squirrel can they can glide. Leave, glide. They can glide from tree to tree, and they better hit their target too. That's right. right? It's a long uh, way down if they mm, don't. Yeah, you don't barely make it. Uh, <laughs> but the bat can actually fly, and uh, little. Inf- so, what's your question for us, brother? Hey, hey, Craig, Craig. What is your question for us? Um, it's kind of late for it, but uh, what were the names of the two trees that grabbed uh Chris mm. Crinkle in the the? Oh, I forget the name of the movie, but I'm, I think you know it. The name? You mean uh, like a Santa Claus movie at Christmas yeah, time? Yeah, the S- Santa Claus is coming to town. What's the well, name? What's what was the name of the two trees that grabbed Chris Crinkle when he was making his way home over the mountain? Bob and George. Bob and George? Would that be correct? I was Willie Wibble La- and Peter Pine. I was going to say Laurel and Hardy. Uh, <laughs> the, what was the name of it, Craig? The name of the trees? Willie Willow and Peter Pine. Ah, Good. You nice. stopped it, Craig. That's right. Hey, your little brother there? What? Was your little brother there? Uh... Yeah. What's his name? Jimmy. Jimmy. Yeah. Jim, J- J- does Jimmy want to play? Yeah. All right, we'll put him on the phone. That, that is he, Jimmy. That is Jimmy. He's here. They've swapped. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't recognize the voice change there. I'm going to answer the one about the life sparrow. Lifespan. Lifespan, I mean. Okay, the lifespan. Uh, okay, what animal has the longest lifespan, uh, Jimmy? What, what would be the correct answer? That would be the sea turtle. Yes. Wow, way yes. to go. Way to go. A.K.A. the giant tortoise. And the giant tortoise is about the life. Listen to this now. This is going to, you can use this information right here. The lifespan of the giant tortoise, or the sea turtle, as Jimmy called it, is about 150 years. Wow. Wow. Making it, uh, I mean, you, you qualify for AARP, uh, you know, halfway through your life. You know what I'm saying? You know, that could be a pet that would be an heirloom. Where'd you get that turtle? <laughs> well, that was my great, great granddad's <laughs> turtle, and they passed Dude. it down. Thank you, Jimmy. Thanks, Jimmy. Thanks, Craig. Have a great weekend. Okay. The, seriously, the lifespan of a giant wow. tortoise is about... Uh, 150 years, why any being would want to live that long on this planet, I don't know. But the lifespan of a giant tortoise is about 150 years, making it the longest living animal on the planet. In captivity, some giant tortoises have lived as long as 177 years. Now, these animals don't get a birth certificate. No. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm just wondering, how, how do you know... It's lived 177, not not 175 or around. Right. <laughs> this says they have lived as long as 177 years. You got years. the people at the zoo, and they're saying, look, be nice to that turtle right there because yeah. he's been here so long. He got my granddad fired. Right. Uh, and we still talk about it in our family, so you need to be. be I don't know. But, but there's no bitterness. A sea, tur- <laughs> a sea turtle can live. So, 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 so if a sea turtle lived 100, so you could have a sea turtle alive out there right now. That was here during the Civil War. Wow. Think about that yep. for a minute. Uh, wow. Jim, that, do you have nothing to say? Um, said, I said wow. wow. That's oh, all did you? Yeah. Okay, Jim, I'm sorry. We said it in it was stereo. stereo. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. You're listening to Trivia Friday on American Family Radio. I'm Tim Wildman with J, uh, J.J. Jasper and Jim Stanley. It's Trivia Friday. Man, my questions have just been wiped out here. I didn't realize they, they were, were that easy. They were very popular. Okay, and our phone number here is 888-589-8840, 888-589-8840. American Family Radio is the network you're listening to. 
And we go to Mitchell calling from Wilmer, Alabama. Hi, Mitchell. Hey, how are you guys today? All right, my friend. <clears throat> Thanks for calling. Did you, did you, which one you want to ask or answer? I'll do both. All right, go ahead. Uh, I wanted to answer the one about the music. The music, all right. Here you go. Listen to uh, the music. Listen to the music. And Doobie Brothers, I think. Or play that funky go ahead. music. Yes, sir. Why, <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. yes, I go ahead, it, I Jim. stopped. All right. What, what song was played the most on American radio during the 20th century? What song um, was played the most on American radio during the 20th century? Would it be Yesterday by the Beatles? It would not be Yesterday oh, by the Beatles. That is a good guess, That was though. an excellent Anything guess. Anything by the Beatles would be a good guess. Uh, but I'm just thinking probably something uh, 40s, 50s right in there would probably be... You know, because they would have had more decades to be played on the radio, something popular. But anyway, good yep. guess. What's nice your question? Try. What, what's your question for us, uh, Mitchell, brother Mitchell? Okay, what classic arcade game was considered to be the first one aimed at both boys and girls? Frogger. Nope. Uh, I'm gonna say, what about Pong? Nope. The first video arcade game? Yes, sir. Aimed at both Pac boys and girls. Pac-Man? Yes, Pac-Man. Pac-Man. Pac-Man is correct? Yes. Oh, All right, I'll give myself know. a hand. I'm that clapping one. for you, Tim. My I wrist know. is sore to this day yeah. <laughs> from playing Pac-Man. Man, I just remember when I went to, went to junior college, and that video arcade was very popular, and that was one of the most uh, – people wiped out a lot of lunch uh, meals. You know, using, right. their, using their quarters right. on the Pac-Man. So you had Frogger, and you had Pac-Man, and you had the Atari thing where those lines of all those that little things Gal- were shooting. Gal- Galactica. Right, yeah. I think shooting pin- those rows of... Had uh, a couple of pinball machines in there. Right. But usually that Pac-Man machine was just... I got dibs on it. You know, you got a line of people waiting to play the Pac-Man. And then Lady right. Pac-Man came around. <laughs> right. right. Hey, anyway. Mitchell, thanks. Have a great weekend, brother. You too. Thank you, Mitchell. Uh, we're talking vintage... Uh, Early 80s right there, aren't we? Yes. <clears throat> Late 70s, early 80s. Well, really, the pinball machines dominated the oh, 70s. they've been around a long time. Yeah. Uh, they go back to the 60s, do they? Pinball they, machines? They do. In fact, when they were first made, they didn't have the flippers to help you. you just, what did you do? You threw rocks you, at you it. You watched. <laughs> you, you, you pulled the plunger back. I remember And them. let the ball go. And you just watched it for well, a minute. Just random luck. Yeah, just, yeah. Yeah, there uh, were no flippers. I got at least... Have something you, to well, do with that's it. when you that's where they learned how to hit the corner right, with the palm of right. your hand because you can do a little something, yeah. Or you can put a bunch of body English in there, yeah. like you do when you're bowling, yeah, and you want to get a strike until you hit tilt. Uh, really? Or you wait to stay uh, out of the gutter. Jim Stanley, the pinball wizard here on staff at American Family Radio. <laughs> I'm Tim with Jim Misfit and youth. JJ and Kathy.